Tschüss. Hi, how are you? Um, so I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to have him implant in my head. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, I don't know. I mean, it'd be good for certain things, but I'd probably be one of the people that didn't do it. Yeah. I don't, really, I don't think I could either, especially after seeing how everything unfolds in this film. <laughs> but it feels plausible. Like, it was interesting last night when you were talking about, like, you could take, like, a more Blade Runner or RoboCop or some kind of approach where it feels... <laughs> Big, well, I guess maybe not Robocop, that still feels small, but like this kind of low key, but still feels big at the same time. Mm. And so it's not heavy on CGI. It requires so much more of you guys to kind of, you know, make that world feel real. And so I wonder, like, everyone has their process for, you know, making the, the world feel real. So what did you pull out of the preparation process that, I don't know, kind of informed the textbook way of, you know, acting or directing any kind of like visual stimuli or something that feels tangible outside of just, you know, like the basic stuff. I mean, yeah, sorry, yeah, no, go. Uh, I mean, with Logan, he did a lot of training to, um, on his own time and with the production to, uh, to move that way. Cause mm -hmm. he's, he's, body goes through all these transformations in the film. You know, he starts out as this regular guy, kind of bad posture, hunched over car engines, and then he's a quadriplegic, which is a whole other stage, and, and um, then he has this computer controlling everything from the neck down, so now he's got this simultaneous thing of kind of a, a head on a, on a stick, and, and um, Logan really worked on that. You know, it was so great to meet Logan because he took each one of those stages very seriously. And he knew how Gray would stand when he was at home, and he was fine. He worked with a quadriplegic, um, and you know, I was in Australia in pre-production, and, and Logan and I would chat and Skype with each other, and I was just so impressed by his his dedication and his you know doing all this stuff on his own time, driving up to Santa Barbara to talk to this quadriplegic guy, spending time with him, moving with him, using his chair. And then also he would send me videos he, videos of him in his backyard just eating an apple or throwing a rock as STEM. And it was interesting after having – after writing the script for so long, all of a sudden I'm looking at someone perform it. And I was like – at the time when you sent me the first video, I was like, huh, is this it? <laughs> I was like, is this what we're doing? <laughs> me too. I was like, this is a leap into the unknown. Yeah. And uh, – but – it was like a thousand cuts approach. Each little brick we put in there, I think, or each little ingredient um, added up to what it is. We even, um, several times throughout the film, we actually locked the camera to Logan so that yeah. wherever he moves, it's with him. It's almost like he's wearing a camera rig, but he's not, you know. And that was another thing, a layer within camera that helps add to this mm -hmm. feeling. So. All this is to say that there was just so many elements and layers to build the, the movement of, of Logan's character. Because mm. I'm a very meticulous film watcher, and the whole time I was wondering how the hell you achieved all those shots, especially <laughs> like the first one that's kind of like, you know, the punch through the, the face where it's, he just lifts up. It's yeah. like a rise from the dead kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah, we, we, I mean, we didn't have a big budget on this film, so we really had to be creative about how we pull those things off. You know, if you, if you have $100 million at your disposal, you can hire all the best technicians and figure things out, but we had to do it in a really, like, punk way. It was like, okay, Logan, you're going to do, you know, 80% of it just with your movement and, and your, you know, training before the film. Then we'll put a rig on you. Then we'll lock the camera to you. Then we'll... and. All this, all this stuff combined, you know, hopefully adds up to something that that looks, um, if not more expensive, but bigger, feels bigger than the movie actually is. You know, it's kind of a bit of sleight of hand to make a, a, a lower budget film feel bigger. Mm -hmm. Do you do do you all have like fear of tech? I mean, I'm, I assume like everybody in the world does, but do you have like any limitations for yourself on? especially after seeing this movie, like, 
my boss has one of those Tesla cars that drives itself. And then after seeing this, I'm like, I, yeah, I'm really <laughs> not doing it. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you have any limits on this stuff? I mean, fears. Um, I have more fear of our people. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely afraid of people right now. Just do the <laughs> I was in charge. Um, uh, I'm not about saying that. Um, <laughs> Like, I would much rather have my little girl, I'm sure you probably feel the same, in an automatic car when she's 16 than her one of her 16-year-old friends driving a True. I'll take, I'll roll those dice on this. So I'm sure when she is, which is like, oh my God, 10 years from now, um, I would much, I'd probably trust an automatic car 10 years from now than some uh, 17-year-old girl who's her friend who's trying out pot. Right. Or it's because of that tech that's making them, you know, being buried in your phone all the time that you're not really paying attention to anything in your life anymore. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, like as Logan pointed out, you know, you know, I have a young daughter too and thinking of her driving, you know, computers can drive better than humans can. The big, the leading cause of car crashes obviously is human error and computers... Uh, are much more sensitive to... And so I feel like if everyone on the road was in an automated car, maybe it would be safer. Having said that, a, a, an automated car is a computer on wheels and it's vulnerable to hacking. So there's, there's different things. So I, like Logan, I'd probably feel safe with safer with my daughter sitting in the back of a car that's being driven by this perfect computer. But on the other hand, I'm wondering where this is all leading. You know, people barely look up for their phones now you know, I think that when computers start to become a part of our bodies, which is around the corner, mm -hmm. you know, that's the next evolution, I think, is people in 20, 30 years will look back and be like, can you believe they used to have to carry something, yeah. this cumbersome thing in their pocket? Look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll be here. It'll be in us. Yeah. And that, to me, I, I think I do have a little bit of fear. You know, I, I, I this sort of online screaming this 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 thing that's this noise that wasn't there before even with social media it's just it's quite overwhelming it gives me it does give me anxiety i, I think that's where the film comes from but i don't know do you yeah. get that with social media do you, does it make you feel anxious to log oh, onto yeah. twitter and just read all this yeah no i avoid it like the plague even <laughs> though i have social media at the Betty Gabriel. Uh, <laughs> follow me. Um, the manager's email is on the website. <laughs> you can no, find it. Yeah, I mean, I think, well, here's the thing. I think there can be, there's great power in it, there's, in technology. It can be used for good. It can be a great forum for us to spread the word on this matter or that matter. Obviously, there is potential for um, terrible things, you know, bullying and that mm. horrible things that human beings do to each other. Um, but, you know, I think, right, we all kind of researched Ray Kurzweil. I think that was because he was recommended. Ray Kurzweil, the mm -hmm. futurist, you know. Mm -hmm. um, he has a very optimistic take on technology and how pervasive it's becoming and, um, and how AI is exponentially, you know, going to just evolve. Blah blah blah, and, and and but you know yeah we could maybe use it to save our planet which is dying you know that's yeah. the hope. Or they could I be that we, tech. Well, they could be nanobots that eat cancer yeah. cells. Or there's, I think it's there's so so many great things about technology and mm -hmm. so many ways it can improve the world. But then you have to examine the yang to the yin. You know you need to yeah. you need you need to we need to look at our keeping perspective of this stuff and how are we going to, you know, keep it under our control, you know? I liked what you said last night. I found it really interesting, that, that question of, like, well, what is the end game? You know, yeah. for our intentions of making technology make our lives more accessible, easy, assisted, but where does it end? I found that really interesting. And like, I think there true. might be a backlash where... <clears throat> people are suddenly like, oh, I don't want to order anything on my phone anymore. I want to go to a store. And, you know, it, I, I think so. You usually see people push back against stuff like this. Just like sometimes. waiting for where, you know, when are we starting? Just that book, ro ro Robot Apocalypse, Robo Robo Apocalypse, right. that I, like, uh, 
Uh, <laughs> anyway, the, it, there's this whole like advocacy now in the future right, for robots. Like, where do their rights come in? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. They're yeah. doing so much for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, when do these? I just think it's interesting. What is that end game? Like, where do we? What is our relationship? And and just presence alone, I find really fascinating because I think someone who's on his cell phone at dinner, it seems very not in the present. But right. actually, it could potentially be very present with his son putting him to bed, FaceTiming, you know, texting with somebody who's going through something hard. And our ability to be present in multiple ways, I think, is really fascinating. Mm. Um, you know, because I think we have a very instant attitude towards people on their phones. But right. remember, we're on our phones to be present in other ways. Yeah. Other people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, this movie has a lot of big questions that we can talk about for Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> But it, but it has the B movie fun to it as well, mm-hmm. so you should feel proud. So oh, thank cool. you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.